The general consensus on health pertaining to diet and lifestyle is based around big pharma profits, making a few people a lot of money at the expense of the masses, causing every modern disease and illness we know to this day based on different scenarios. These negatives are magnified greatly during developmental stages of life. Worst case scenario, perhaps a miscarriage, and on the other end of the spectrum, simply being ugly, which is all blamed on genetics. Now that's a gross simplification, and I consider the genetics excuse a gaslighting technique used by authority figures to keep us brainwashed and complacent. A very simple analogy for this is looking at nature. You know, animals in the wild don't have crazy miscarriage rates that are just going up and up and up. They don't have eyesight requiring glasses, crooked teeth needing braces, and for the most part, look similar to each other. That's because in a natural environment, on a natural diet, there is consistent nutritional input that results in near ideal development every single time. If your child isn't a six foot tall supermodel that can speak eight languages, chances are something went wrong along the way. And I'm not really exaggerating when I say that. Now, wild animals had to deal with predation, scarcity, and humans in tribal scenarios had to as well, but the ones that lived in villages, practiced agriculture to some degree, kind of like how the Amish live now, had long, happy lives in ideal health. This is greatly discussed and referenced in the book Nutrition and Physical Degeneration by Weston Price, but to simplify it, we can start with the negatives. Three typical things. The mother binging on different foods she craves because she can't isolate the correct nutrients. Two, a poorly formulated prenatal vitamin that can do more harm than good. Three, constant doctor visits with unnecessary procedures. Basic solutions are to increase the amount of animal foods, overall food quality, get plenty of sunlight, especially vitamin D, and reduce environmental radiation as much as possible. Prenatal vitamins should simply be avoided. I have a whole video explaining why multivitamins are bad for you, which translates directly to prenatal vitamins. Basically, the chemical forms of the nutrients they use can be harmful and the dosage is drastically inadequate or far too high. A pregnancy doctor, obstetrician, can provide tests to monitor the baby's health, but their job is to deliver a child that is barely alive, not adequately nourished, as opposed to optimizing the baby's health. Ultrasounds and procedures that radiate the baby are also modern things that are actively harming the child. They do it with a smile on their face. It's all okay. The radiation is non-ionizing. Yeah, well, non-ionizing radiation almost killed me on multiple occasions. Just the environmental radiation on its own in our environment right now that the average person is exposed to is so damaging, especially to a child, let alone ultrasounds to a baby. And what's even worse is those baby monitors and devices they're using now. I did a video on Abby Sharp on how she was frying her child all day. So reducing this radiation is by far the most brushed away factor in general, not just pregnancy. The convenience of our modern electronic devices combined with the media's ability to brush away every concern people have as insignificant is truly damaging the health of ourselves and our children. Personally, I wear anti-radiation clothing every day, all day. I sleep in a bed canopy and I spend most of my idle time throughout the day in a bed canopy set up by my computer. The very minimum that should be done is the mother wearing a shirt to protect the developing child at all times. They actually do this a lot in China. It's like a shawl. And then when you have the baby actually born, wrap it in some type of shawl so it's always shielded. Definitely if you have it in a baby carriage, some type of protective fabric. And especially when the baby is sleeping in the crib, it should be protected like a smaller canopy. So we just mentioned the job of doctors is more about keeping people alive as opposed to making them healthy. In these tribes and indigenous groups of people, when a young couple was going to conceive, have a child, they would enact on a special feeding regimen for around two years. The health of the female egg and male sperm, even in a natural wild environment, 
was increased dramatically by focusing on specific foods that were typically very high in omega fatty acids, B vitamins, and cholesterol. Examples of that are fish eggs, aka caviar, animal brains, shellfish, especially crab, even certain fatty insects and larvae, really leaning towards that omega-3. And that was for two years before even getting pregnant. Two years. That feeding regimen continued through pregnancy, breastfeeding, which was typically two to four years long, and then the growing child was also fed those very, very nutritious foods. What we do now with a prenatal vitamin halfway into pregnancy is absolutely pathetic. Another video I did a few months back was top five pregnancy foods where I went really in depth on the specific diet, what to eat, and due to most women being incredibly deficient across the board, I think a minimum of three to four years of high quality nutrition would be ideal before even thinking about getting pregnant. So I simplified this into six categories today, starting with omega fatty acids and brain development by far most significantly important factor here. Brain being composed of omega-3s, it makes sense as to why we want the mother eating a lot of caviar, a lot of animal brains, minimally polluted fish. Vitamin D3, definitely the second most important. Everyone is deficient, not getting enough sun, key for skeletal development. We did another video probably about two years ago now where we took a look at studies showing that babies born in certain months where their mother was exposed to more vitamin D, were more intelligent, taller, you know, higher attainment in all aspects of life. And then we have the vitamin K2, which is another fat soluble vitamin that's very deficient due to poor gut health. Uh, you definitely want to be taking a K2 MK4 supplement, drinking a lot of kefir, eating raw cheese, fermented foods. Minerals across the board are very depleted in our modern foods. Iron, zinc, magnesium, copper, selenium. All you can really do is go organic, try to buy as high quality as possible, supplementing initially to kind of replenish those stores that have been depleted over many, many years of a standard American diet. B vitamins tend to be inherent with a high quality diet, but if you have enzyme issues, if you're not absorbing food properly, uh, those foods we mentioned, the high probiotic foods, the kefir, stuff like yogurt, increasing your meat intake is a great way to get a balance of those B vitamins. And then what I mean here by macro is the bigger picture. Like every cell in the body is made of cholesterol. Protein is by far the most significant nutrient for all growth. Bone growth, tissue growth, cell growth, every single tissue predominantly uses protein, amino acids. So, you know, that's why veganism is so far off of what humans are meant to be. And, you know, it's very obvious why they run into issues because what our body specifically needs is exact opposite to a vegan diet. So we spoke mostly about removing the radiation and increasing the nutrition of the diet, but we wanna be very mindful of all negatives in the lifestyle. You know, what type of water are you drinking? Detergent used on your clothes, on your dishes? Are you breathing in polluted air? There's so many important things that I've covered in past videos. And you know, when you're pregnant, when you're raising another human being, this is even more important. And it's kind of sad that we have to use this as an excuse to be healthy when we should all be living as optimally as possible all the time. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me. Definitely check out those other several videos. You can just search Frank Tofano Pregnancy on YouTube and you'll find them. If you could please drop a like on the video, leave a comment down below, subscribe so that YouTube can unsubscribe you next week, and check that notification bell so they don't notify you of my videos. Therefore, if you can please check out frank stefanocom to support me as well as my businesses. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you for tomorrow.